All right, eighth grade. Now that we've finished with the quadratics test, we can move on to fill in the final gaps in other things you're going to need to go into high school math. First of all, the last two bits about radicals. And the first one is lesson 103, division by radicals. No such thing. All right, just like we don't really divide by fractions, we invert and multiply. We can talk about division by radicals, but if you think about it, I mean, how are you going to punch in something divided by a non-terminating, non-repeating number? Not, not going to happen. So we have to be a little more clever and realize that we cannot divide by radicals. All right? So you can recognize this when there's a radical in the denominator. And whatever you do, you can never leave a radical in the denominator. All right? You have to deal with it. A radical in the denominator in any form, in any way, any radical is NST, and you got to make it simpler. All right? So we took a look at this is what I mean by a radical in the denominator here, right? I mean, 5 over root 2, not going to happen. 8 root 8 over root 2, not going to happen. Here, we've got a rational number here, but a radical and irrational number there, not going to happen. we got to deal with all of these, all right? Turns out, we can start by understanding the quotient rule for radicals, all right? And the quotient property says that if you have some radical as a fraction, a over b, and notice I've got the index number there, n, right? When there is no number sitting on this little platform, that always means 2, square root, right? But you could have cube root, quad root, whatever, it doesn't really matter. The principle is the same, is that if you have a fraction inside a radical, that's the same thing as breaking it apart into a radical on top and a radical on the bottom, all right? And this is what's considered an irrational denominator, all right? And if we start with something like this, you've got to realize it's going to turn into something like that, and you can't let it be that way. So this is not simplest terms either. All right? But our first step to getting it in simplest terms is to understand that a fraction inside breaks into two radicals outside. All right? So what we have to do is something called rationalize the denominator. All right? We have to take an irrational number and make it rational so that we can divide by it, all right? So if we start with something like the square root of 7 thirds, all right? We're going to use the quotient, the quotient rule here to break the square root of 7 thirds into the square root of 7 over the square root of 3, all right? First step, fairly simple. But now we've got to get rid of the square root of 3. Well, how do you get rid of a radical sign? You multiply it by a radical. A radical times a radical gets rid of the radical and leaves the radicand, the number or term inside. All right? So if we could multiply root 3 times root 3, we'd get 3. And that would be a nice rational number. And so we're going to take advantage of a very clever little method. We are going to, we are going to multiply this by a name for 1 root 3 here, and root 3 here. This, regardless of being a irrational over irrational, still equals 1. And when you multiply something by 1, you don't change it. Luckily for us, this has the ability now that when we multiply root 7 times root 3, we get root 21. And when we multiply root 3 times root 3, yeah, we get root 9, but come on, root 9 is 3, right? A radical times itself is always the number inside. And there we have solved the problem of this radical in the denominator by creating a name for 1 with radicals. All right? And we check to make sure that this radical is in simplest terms. It is. And we leave it like that, and there's our answer. All right? So the key to rationalizing the denominator is coming up with some fraction that is a name for 1 that's going to neutralize the radical sign in the denominator. Let's take a look at another one. It doesn't matter whether there's a variable or a number inside the radical. 
we would start off root 5 over root x. All right? Quotient rule, break it in. Well, we want to get rid of this radical x. All right? So we're going to simply just make a name for 1 that will eliminate the radical on the bottom, and then we'll just see what happens on top. Well, root 5 times root x is root 5x. And root x times root x is root x squared, which is plain old x. And please, there is no simplification, no canceling out here, all right? This is the square root of this stuff compared to just that stuff, all right? So you cannot simplify that way. And so that's the answer, all right? Sometimes you have to simplify before you rationalize, all right? In other words, you start off with something like this, root 72, 4, x, x to the fourth, over 3, root 20, x to the third. We recognize this radical in the denominator ain't going to fly. So we're going to simplify that. We break this into a perfect square, 36 times 2, and we break up x to the fourth into a perfect square, x squared, x squared. Simplify that, square root of 36, 6. The 2 stays inside. 2 go in, 1 comes out, x squared. Or you could think of it the square root of x to the fourth is half of x to the fourth, x squared. And so simplifying the numerator, we get 6x squared over 2. Simplifying the denominator, 20, we see it's got the perfect square 4 inside it. So 3 times the square root of 4 is 2. We got a 5 that's not going anywhere. x squared is going to come out. 1 is going to come out. And this x is going to stay in. And so we get 3 times 2x times 5x, or 6x root 5. All right, so really all we've done is take this and turn it into two different problems. Simplify that, then simplify that, all right? And now that it's simplified, we've got that. So here we have the simplified version of this, and we see, wait a minute, we've got the same thing on top and bottom. We can do some canceling out. This 6 cancels out this 6. This x is going to cancel out one of those, and that gives us an x root 2 on the top. And the 6x went away, so now I've got root 5x there. Now I've got to get rid of the radical. I've got to rationalize the denominator, so I very cleverly make a fraction that is root 5x over root 5x, so that root 5x times root 5x just gives me the 5x. And I still have to do top times the top. x times root 2 times root 5x is 10, 2 times 5x. So I've got x when I do the top, times 10 root, or root 10x over 5, but then I see, wait a minute, I've got x's here that are outside the radical, and I can simplify that, and that leaves me with the final answer, root 10x over 5. Okay. So we simplified the top, we simplified the bottom, we canceled out where we could, recognizing that there's no canceling inside the radicals. We simplified things, and then we took advantage of multiplying by a name for 1. That got rid of the radical sign in the denominator. That left us with a chance to cancel out the x's. And what we're left with is root 10x over 5. Right, let's try another one. So here we start off with something, I and mean, you see this root 50 y to the 6. Well, you got to figure that's got to be able to be simplified. And there's got to be a perfect square factor lurking in 28, and certainly y to the 4th is perfect square there. So let's simplify the top. So we got 2, and this gives us root 25 times 2, y to the 3rd times y to the 3rd to give us y to the 6th. And then here, 28. Now, 4 goes into that 7 times, so 4 is a nice perfect square there. So 4 times 7 is 28. y to the 5th will go down to y to the 4th times y. All right. And then we'll look at the top here, and we've got a 2 that's already outside, times, well, the square root of 25 times 5. And uh, the 2, this is going to stay inside. And here we have 2y to the 3rd, so 1 comes out, y to the 3rd, 
root 2. All right. And so here, 4, that's going to give me a 2 here, times uh, y to the 4th, square root of that, y squared, and just leaves 7y inside. And notice I didn't do 2 times 5, because what do you know, the 2's cancel out. So now, I've got 5, y squared, root 2, over y squared, root 7y. And right away, the y squared will nicely cancel out. But I'm still left with this radical in the denominator. So I've got to multiply top and bottom by a root 7y, root 7y. So now I've got 5 times root 2 times root 7y, which gives me 5 root 2 times 7y, 14y over, and now I've got root 7y times root 7y, which is just 7y. And that's about as far as we can go. Please, you cannot do any canceling out here because this is in the radical sign, and that is not. So, that's as simple as it gets, and that would be our answer. Yeah, looks, looks complicated, but you break it down, make it simpler, one step at a time, all right? Use nice lots of scratch paper, and you wind up with the right answer. All right. Now, sometimes it gets just a tad trickier when we need to understand something called a conjugate. Now, a conjugate is used uh, to rationalize a denominator when you have a binomial denominator and one of the terms is a radical, but the other one isn't. All right? So, for example, you look at something like some number, A, plus the square root of something. It's conjugate, we say, the way to rationalize it, the way to make the radical disappear. I mean, if you think about it, if I multiply this times root b, that's great. That gets rid of this root b. But I have to distribute that to the a as well. And now I've got an a root b, and that's not helping me at all. So instead, to get rid of a conjugate denominator, a denominator that's got a whole number and a radical, you have to be very clever and use this idea of the opposite. So that if I've got a plus b, we say its conjugate is a minus b. Now, why does that work? You're asking. Very simple. This works because if I multiply a plus b times its conjugate a minus b, and here b is root b, all right? And we foil this, look, first times first, I get a squared, right? But inner and outer gives me plus ab and minus ab, and the radicals go away. And then last times last is the radical times itself, and you've got a minus b there without a radical sign. So the conjugate works because you're multiplying the difference of, and you wind up with the difference of perfect squares, basically. All right? So that's a tricky way to deal with problems like this, for example. You got 3 over 4 plus root 5. If you just multiplied root 5 over root 5 times this, that would get rid of this, but then you'd have 4 root 5. So that's the reason it doesn't work. So we're going to use the conjugate of this, all right? The conjugate. It's 4 plus root 5, so I'm going to use 4 minus root 5 and then make the numerator 4 minus root 5 as well, which, regardless of what that actually is, is going to be 1 because it's the same thing on top and bottom. So now I multiply top times the top, and I have to distribute the 3. All right, it's 3 times this and 3 times that. That gives me 12 minus 3 root 5. And now bottom times bottom is a matter of foiling. And when I FOIL, first times first, 16, inner, plus 4 root 5, outer, minus 4 root 5, and last times last is root 5 times root 5, or minus root 5, which is just minus root 5. So the plus 4 root 5 and the minus 4 root 5 cancel out. And I'm left with 12 minus 3 root 5 over 16 minus 5. 
And that simplifies down into 12 minus 3 root 5 over 11. And that's the answer. All right? So, again, like so much of algebra, it's a matter of recognition. You've got to recognize what's going on here. I don't have a radical all by itself. I have to use a conjugate to get rid of that radical. Okay? So here's another example. We have to simplify this. There's a radical in the denominator. Again, it doesn't matter where it is. If there's a radical in the denominator, you have to simplify it. So I'm going to multiply that times the conjugate. 7 root 7 minus 2. And that would be root 7 minus 2 as well. And top times the top would be 6 root 7 minus 12. That's no problem. You can have a numerator with a radical. And on the bottom, if I FOIL this, first times first is 7. Then I get plus 2 root 7 minus 2 root 7 goes away. And then 2 times minus 2 minus 4. All right? So I'm FOILing this binomial to get rid of the radical term. And it works. All right? So now it's just a matter of 6 root 7 minus 12. Can we simplify this? 7 minus 4, 3. Well, yes we can because we got our good friend the GCF here. I can factor out a 6 and have root 7 minus 2 over 3. And then do some canceling here and just get 2 parentheses root 7 minus 2 for the answer. And you can distribute that if you want or just leave it like that either way. But certainly winding up with this is much nicer than what we started with, which is the whole point of rationalizing denominators. So for some practice on this, please take a look at lesson 103. Do a to e and 4 to 8. And we'll see you in a radical way next time.